There are two very different opposing stories about that power plant behind me. One says that it's the nuclear disaster that never was, a partial meltdown that was averted, that was stopped, and that had negligible effects in the people around this town. But other stories differ. They've concluded that significantly more radiation made its way out of the plant in 1979, shifting the cancer rates for nearing residents for decades. But whichever story you choose to believe, there's no denying that this was a traumatic experience for the people around this town and for the American consciousness. The danger to public safety became apparent today. Pregnant women and preschool children were urged to leave their homes. Where are you going to? Should we go? Yeah, I'm not coming back. The Three Mile Island incident halted the construction of new power plants for years and contributed to the U.S. moving away from nuclear power, potentially for good. Today, only about 19% of U.S. energy comes from nuclear. We've only built two nuclear power plants since the year 2000, but things look to be changing. The nuclear power movement is gaining so much momentum that Microsoft and Constellation have committed billions of dollars to reopen this plant. But why still this plant with all this baggage? The very real possibility of a nuclear meltdown at the Three Mile Island Atomic Power Plant. There could be a sudden, violent steam explosion, scattering radioactive debris into the environment. So, Three Mile Island is actually made up of two reactors. That cylindrical building, that's the containment building for reactor one. Those are the cooling towers, and that blue building, that's what houses the turbines, that's where electricity gets made. Now that cylindrical building is the containment structure for reactor two. That's the one that melts down. A PWR nuclear power plant uses extremely hot radioactive material to heat water, producing electricity. So the water cycling through the system not only produces steam to move a turbine, but keeps the reactor from overheating. In 1979, through a combination of human error and bad instrument readings, a meltdown was triggered in Unit 2. An unexpected release of more radiation today from the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant has led to a series of consequences. Middletown, Pennsylvania is on edge tonight. It was the first step in a nuclear nightmare. I'm gonna leave the advanced explainers to Kuzgesagt. For today, all you need to understand is that a meltdown is when the reactor core overheats and begins to literally melt down. This is a nuclear chain reaction and it can get so hot that nothing can stop it, not even the containment structure. If radioactive material leaks into the environment, it can poison people around it and make the land uninhabitable for decades. The Three Mile Island meltdown was stopped before it escaped containment, but it triggered an emergency evacuation of the nearby towns and of course the complete shutdown of both reactors in the plant for years. This is pre-Chernobyl, by the way, so plenty of residents just didn't understand what was happening or what nuclear radiation could mean. All they had was... The China Syndrome. It's about people people who lie. The official position has remained that no truly harmful radiation levels ever reached the population. A legal fight broke in the years after, made it all the way to the Supreme Court. Town folk activists were fighting to keep the plant closed, but the company that ran it, GPU, not to be confused with a GPU, which is in part culprit for this mess, but kept fighting to reactivate its remaining undamaged reactor unit one. Eventually, people lost and the Three Mile Island Reactor 1 restarted in 1985. GPU ran Reactor 1 for years. It sold it in 98, it sold it again, and finally Exelon, the 2019 owner, gave up on making money from it and decided to shut the plant down for good and schedule it for decommission. Nuclear power was just too expensive compared to pretty much every other source of electricity these days. But our energy needs were utterly transformed over the last three years. This is the average power use for all data centers in the US. Notice how energy needs are pretty flat, but the workload has been going up. That's because naturally we're making more efficient computers. But notice the trend after 2020. That spike matches exactly with the rise of AI. Open AI. The open AI. AI. Chat GPT. Yeah. Chatbots. Artificial intelligence tools. The AI arms race has experts worried about its climate consequences. Now, I don't want to get too technical on this, but what changed here is that your chatbot requires a lot of computing power, which has reversed the trend on power usage for the first time in years. These data centers not only need more electricity, but also power from stable sources. They actually call this firm power. Companies like Apple and Google have tried to use solar energy, and they do, but that requires power storage. It requires contracts with those good old fossil fuel power plants for I mean, that time of the day when the sun's not around. And the same problem goes for wind power. But nobody wants more carbon emissions. Of course, we've seen the consequences of climate change all too well, and just something doesn't sit right with heating our planet to build this technology that will eventually take our jobs. 
Now, while Google and Apple have committed to becoming carbon neutral by 2030, Microsoft actually saw an increase in carbon emissions of 29% between 2020 and 2023. Their electricity spent per dollar of revenue grew by 50%. That's just how much extra power machine learning and AI draw. And it's not just a Microsoft problem. So companies are looking at nuclear energy again. While it's not the most cost effective, it doesn't add CO2 to the atmosphere. It just leaves some radioactive material that needs to get buried and continues to be radioactive for thousands of years. But I'm gonna get to that. Now, earlier this year, Amazon bought a new plot for a data center conveniently located next to the Susquehanna nuclear power plant. But Microsoft made this small investment in this new non-profit AI company, and it has committed to providing them with the server power that they need, and they have to solve how to do it. Constellation Energy announced it will spend $1.6 billion to restart that reactor. It's part of a 20-year deal to provide power to Microsoft data centers. Well, of course, Microsoft agreeing to buy two decades worth of energy. And yes, you did hear that right. We are talking about Three Mile Island. Okay, but why still this plant with all this baggage? Well, because building a new nuclear power plant may just be too much of a mess. We've only built two nuclear power plants since the year 2000, in part because navigating regulation is a nightmare, in part because nobody wants them in their backyard, no shit, but also in part because they're so expensive. The last plant an American company built ran $17 billion over budget for a total of $31 billion, and it came seven years late. For comparison, a gas power plant, maybe the Panda Patriot Power Project, could produce a similar 830 megawatts of power, cost just a billion dollars to build, but it does come with that nasty 2.5 million metric tons of CO2 emissions. But it's not just the building cost, but the decommissioning cost as well. Since nuclear power generates that sweet nuclear waste, regulations require companies to set aside a fund to decommission the plant when it's done with its lifetime. These AI companies may just need to go to decommission sites and just build new plants, but for now, why not use the infrastructure that's already there? That is the logic behind the reactivation of the Palisades nuclear power plant in Michigan, the Duane Arnold nuclear power plant in Iowa, and of course, Three Mile Island. Now, the first thing they're doing is rebranding it as Crane Clean Energy Center. The marketing materials, aka the press release for the reopening, say that they'll create 3,400 direct and indirect jobs. And some people are happy with that. Estimates by the company say that reopening would contribute $16 billion to Pennsylvania's GDP and $3 billion in state and federal taxes. Now, speaking of taxes though, the plant's owner, Constellation, does get a sweet tax credit from the Inflation Reduction Act. Its shares also spiked like 50% after the announcement, which they'll need because they have to spend about $1.6 billion to get the plant ready to run again. But for Microsoft, that's still much better than building a new plant. There's just no stopping the amount of AI-powered experiences that will power our daily lives. By the way, if you want to stay ahead of that curve, Hopstool has put together this business idea database straight from the archives of the My First Million podcast. Clever ideas from a law firm for AI claims to a chat-based travel itinerary service. I'm going to drop the link below if you want to grab a free copy, including access to each one of the episodes where you can listen to the full-fledged idea conversation. But did they have to reopen this plant in particular? Three Mile Island was actually ready for decommissioning. Was there no other choice? Well, not really. Only a handful of plants in the US fit the criteria for reactivation. When a nuclear power plant reaches the end of its lifetime or just becomes unprofitable and shuts down, the company in charge can choose one of two paths. The decon path, decontamination, immediate dismantling, means, well, it means that. Equipment, structures, and parts of the facility containing radioactive contaminants are removed or decontaminated shortly after the plant ceases operation. The site is cleaned to levels that permit release for unrestricted use. This means that it's no longer considered a regulated nuclear area. And that's that. Here are all the plants that were closed and decommissioned recently. Those can't be reactivated because, well, most of the equipment was removed. Now, the other path is safe store or safe storage. Here, the facility is maintained and monitored in a condition that allows the radioactive materials to decay with time. So they're stored for up to 60 years that reduces radiation levels until it's safer to clean them up. Now, these are all the plants in safe store status around the US. And since the equipment is still there, there is a chance to get them online. But it's not that simple. Many of them have been in safe store status for decades. The only plants that went offline less than 10 years ago are these, and they are all in talks to get reactivated. The set of coincidences needed to trigger a nuclear meltdown is truly 
extraordinary, but extraordinary circumstances happen, whether it's a tsunami or human error or an irresponsible operator. There's also no playbook for restarting a nuclear power plant. It's never been done before in the US and it has rarely been attempted worldwide. Only one of few have restarted ever. Plant reactivation is really a small patch in this growing demand for more power. Microsoft has also made a deal with Helion, a company working to develop fusion technology, which could be safer and much more effective as an alternative to the current fission plants. Fusion looks like energy from the future, but it may be as close to us as 2028. Now, I spoke to a few people around town about how they feel about the plant reopening, and the general consensus seems to be neutrality, indifference to optimism. Like, I don't think many of them fear another nuclear meltdown or remember the other one that happened. There's a pretty big variety of opinion. Like, you know, most people care about jobs, and the bigger broad scope of what this does for the world is not the most people's minds. I think it's going to bring a lot of money. I have no problem with them opening that up again. I read up on environmental factors and it didn't really have that much, so reopening it? Okay. It looks like many of them aren't as concerned as I would be having a nuclear power plant in my backyard. But if you enjoyed today's video, you should check out our video on the loophole that a few companies are using to sneak questionable ingredients into your food. I'll catch you on the next one.